Hi everyone, in today's video we'll look at the differential pressure sensor, also called the exhaust pressure sensor number 2. Next will be the exhaust pressure sensor number 1. This video is related to all vehicles equipped with similar systems. We'll focus on the reference data for more straightforward diagnosis, possible symptoms and fault codes. I'm working on a Mazda 2.2 Skyactiv diesel. The diagnosis is related to all model ranges equipped with such sensors. We'll start with the differential pressure sensor, which is one on the left. On the other side, this one here is exhaust pressure sensor number one. Possible fault codes for the differential pressure sensor are P2454 and P2455. If DTCs are stored, the operation of the following system will be inhibited, such as inhibition of the EGR control, inhibition of the DPF regeneration control, engine I-stop function will become inoperative, and the PCM will restrict engine transaxle integration control in vehicles with automatic transmission. The main symptoms are frequent DPF regeneration and heart shifting. We'll prepare the sensor for diagnosis, just in case you need routing of hoses. The left hose is connected before the DPF filter and the other goes behind the filter. As a reference, I'm going to use a new sensor. I've compared the readings of both sensors. I suspected some sensor deterioration resulting in a deviation of its values, but the results were the same. We'll need a multimeter with needle props, a vacuum slash pressure pump, and diagnostic equipment with live data for diagnosis. Here is the DPF differential pressure sensor and its part number. We'll first check the reference voltage from PCM to the sensor. The ignition is switched on, the needle prop is connected to pin 1 of the sensor connector, the other one to the ground, and the voltage reading should be approximately 5 volts. Now we'll switch the needle prop to pin 3. Prepare and connect the pump to the left port of the sensor, and on the diagnostic tool choose parameter called in this case, exhaust gas differential pressure. Other brands of diagnostic equipment may have different names for it. The first thing to be checked is the live data, which should indicate zero kilopascals, with no applied pressure or vacuum. And the voltage should indicate approximately 0.5 volt. Tolerance is plus minus 2 kilopascals if outside the specs replace the sensor. Here we have a recently calibrated vacuum and pressure pump. As you can see, the needle sits at approximately 10 kilopascals, which means your zero reading is at that value. The next step is to check the more comprehensive operation range of the sensor. We do that by applying pressure in increments of 10 kPa. The difference between live data value and pressure applied cannot exceed plus minus 3.5 kPa. We check that until we reach 100 kPa. Note that the maximal reading of the sensor is approximately 102 kPa. I'm also monitoring a voltage meter during diagnosis. According to the workshop manual, the voltage should increase gradually when the accelerator pedal is incrementally depressed while the engine is running. You do not need to run the engine at this stage of diagnosis. You can utilize a pressure pump instead. No exact voltage data is given in the workshop manual, but now you have it. And if the voltage does not increase, replace the sensor.
as you can see, even though I applied a much higher pressure, the sensor reading stayed at 102 kilopascals. The next step is to connect our pump to the other sensor port and apply a pressure of 110 kilopascals. The displayed value on the diagnostic tool should indicate 0 kPa. If anything is above, the sensor should be replaced. You can also apply a vacuum to the connected ports and result will be the same. But the vacuum pump is limited, so let's do it correctly. Here I am experimenting by applying a vacuum to the pressure side. You can test your sensor this way as well. Those DTCs generated during diagnosis could be triggered by disconnection and sensor testing, so remember to clear them. Now we'll go to the diagnosis of exhaust pressure sensor number one. The sensor's primary function is to detect the exhaust gas pressure from the cylinder as basic information for mainly EGR control and boost control. It is connected to the cylinder head, therefore if faulty it inhibits EGR control and I-stop operation and PCM restricts engine automatic transmission integration. Possible DTCs are P0472 and P0473. Symptoms hard shifting and engine jerking. The first thing is to check that the reference voltage is approximately 5 volts. Note that the pin assignment is different from that of the old sensor. You can pause the video and track the wiring assignment. It is visible here. For the output voltage, we would need to use an oscilloscope, and that is for another video. The easiest way is to connect the diagnostic tool and inspect live data of the sensor, and parameters called, in this case, parametric pressure and exhaust pressure sensor bank 1, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. The old sensor malfunctioned without fault codes, and I saw sporadic engine jerking. As you can see, the faulty sensor does not need to trigger the fault code. So we are looking at the live data parameters of the old sensor. According to the workshop manual, the tolerance is plus minus 12.6%. So if the barometric pressure sensor indicates hundreds kilopascals, the, the lower limit will be 87.4 and the upper limit will be 112.6 kilopascals. As is apparent, this sensor's reading is almost 20% out of specs. I will replace it and retest its values. That is our old sensor, and here is the modified one and its part number. In the further part of the video, we'll see the replacement of the sensor. In the meantime, I would like to come back to the methods of diagnosis. The temperature factor may play a significant role here, which I experienced during diagnosis. The customer came to the workshop with symptoms only. The engine was hot and the live data parameter of the exhaust temperature sensor indicated approximately 10%. When the engine cooled down, the parameter was outside specs. Based on experience, when I see live data, reading at 10% deviation, I consider that to be outside specification, and the sensor faulty. I apply the same principle to other brands of vehicles where the technical documentation is unavailable.
So after replacement, the new exhaust pressure sensor shows the same pressure as the barometric pressure sensor. And that's the nominal value. At the end of the video, I included short clips with descriptions while testing the old differential pressure sensor. And that's for comparison. Thanks for watching.